Hello, everyone. I am Ashanti Golar, the president of Emerge. Thank you for joining us today for Emerge's celebration of Black women leaders for Black History Month. We are going to be highlighting some of the spectacular alums in our network, and I have a powerhouse for you all today. I am joined by my Emerge California sister, Latifa Simon, who was elected to the San Francisco BART Board in 2016 and served as the BART Board President in 2020. She is a social justice activist, a community leader, Everything about her is so phenomenal. And I'm really pumped because this is my first time having a one on one interview Yay. with her. So, Latifa, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be in space with you. Oh, I, I feel the same way. I am such a huge fan. And I have so many questions, just so yeah. many questions. So, we're going to get into it. First thing is, what made you take the leap to run for office? You did the Emerge class of 2009. Yeah. So what attracted you to say, okay, I'm doing this and I'm also going to do Emerge? Well, I um, have always been deeply inspired by women in political office. And I got to work for then District Attorney Kamala Harris. And that was during a time that I enrolled in the Emerge program. And I thought, you know, when I, once I got in the program, well, maybe I'll learn a lot about how politics works and I'll be a campaign manager. But I don't know if I really can and should run. Um, I was a single mother at the time. Um, again, running a community organization, didn't have a lot of experience outside of organizing before I went to go work for DA Harris. But Emerge changed my life. And yet still developing that community, it took me a few years to get to the point where I was ready to run. But when I decided to run, I had a whole toolkit and I had an army of women waiting. And within essentially five years after graduating Emerge, I had gotten married, I had had another baby, and I had lost my husband to leukemia. And my world really just shifted and changed. And I saw the intersections of what it meant to be a mom, a widow, someone who had been through the healthcare system, and as a legally blind woman, then back on public transportation. And the Emerge Sisterhood carried me through that process with my late husband. I mean, literally brought food to my doorstep day after day after day. And it felt like in many of those conversations, those sisters were asking me, do everything that you can to regain your humanity. And for us in our community, that means taking power and taking our seat at the table. So being part now of the public transportation system every single day with my babies, um, I said, I'm going to run. I'm going to run for an office that very few people know exist. And hopefully once I get in, I can change the dynamics of that infrastructure. And now we're six years later, and it's the best decision that I could have made after such a difficult point in my life. And now I'm at the head of the table. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are. And I love what you just talked about because when people ask me, you know, what are some of your favorite things about Emerge? And I literally say everything, yeah. but there's just so much to the network and how the women support and uplift each other. And I tell people, I'm, I'm actually sad for you all that you don't get to see it every day. That's because right. We do from the stories that you just told, what we see in the Facebook groups when the women uplifting each other when they run for office, how they support each other during hard times, be it the death of family members, losing jobs. Yes this sense of community that is built. And I tell people, like, once you see it all, that whole cattiness that women have, I'm like, no, not in our network. It's all about uplifting one another. And you talked about using public transportation, being legally blind. What made you specifically say, I got to run for BART board and change what is happening with yeah. public transportation in San Francisco? I mean, really, for me, being connected with a system, um, I had for years um, been very committed and still am to juvenile justice and criminal justice reform. Those issues had deeply touched my community. 
but there was something about being back on public transportation, again, after being in a hospital for two years, hoping to save Kevin's life, um, having two little girls, you know, one almost done with high school, the other one who was three um, with grocery bags on public transportation, on buses and back on our BART system. Um, and then again, getting the encouragement from Emerge Women um, to step out there and lead. I remember it was one day um, I was on the BART and thinking about having lost everything. I had filed bankruptcy. We, 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 all we had was each other in our community. Um, and I literally looked around and I said, you know what? <laughs> I think there's an election next year. And I called Andrea Du. I called Kimberly Ellis, okay? And I said, I need a consultant. I think I'm gonna run. I don't even know what district I'm in, but <laughs> I'm a black woman who relies on public transportation. I believe there's an election next year. and. I don't think there's anybody that looks like me and who has this experience of being transportation dependent, raising babies, but also understands that this transportation system has a police department. It has an intersection of all the issues that I care about, poverty, mobility, law enforcement. So I'm gonna run. And they brought me into an office with A. Smith and the rest is history. He told me then your district is 19 cities. You don't have any money. Uh, you don't have a list but you have the Emerge community and you have people like me who will help you. And we ran that campaign like it was a congressional campaign throughout those 19 cities and we won and beat an incumbent. Um, and I learned that you gotta work hard, but women have been working hard every single day. We work two and three jobs, whether you work one, nine to five, you come home, you do the second shift. Mm -hmm. Running a campaign felt like that. It felt like what you know I've been doing my whole life is getting out the messages that we care about, requesting resources. But the difference, sister, is I was asking for me. Um, and what an, a, a learning opportunity it was. But it wasn't, it, it wasn't the first time. In the Emerge program, you learn how to dial for dollars for your sisters, other campaigns. Um, the, I got so much direct experience that it, it didn't feel foreign. It was hard work. Um, and I recently ran again and recently won my election. And I think our stories, if we can tell women, it's not about winning, it's about running and putting your your foot out there and knowing that you deserve to be at the dais. If it's not your first run, your second run, your third run, we have a place and we have now a, a coven of, of women across the country who will help us get there. We absolutely do. And what you said when I do introductory trainings, one of the first things I say is, okay, think about everything you did before you came here today. Mm -hmm. Think about what you did for yourself, for members of your families, for mm -hmm. colleagues, for friends, the operational side, just yeah. everything. And I give them a minute and I'm like, what makes you think you can't run for office? Because right. everything you just went through in your mind right. is what you do as an elected official. That's right. So I'm really excited to talk about this next piece. I was scrolling through Twitter and this article from Oprah Magazine popped up about some of the greatest civil rights leaders of our time. And I read it. And of course, I see my emerged sister, Latifah Simon. And it talked about how your work will be felt for generations to come. So thank you for everything that you do. And I do want to talk a little bit about what we have seen over the past year. We're entering year two of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We saw racial justice at the forefront last year. On January 6th, we truly saw how fragile our democracy is, where people wanted to destroy it. What are some of your thoughts about where we're at as a country during this time? And what are some of the steps you would like to see the country take to really, in my opinion, we still haven't had the conversation. So when we have the conversation, that's when we can finally start to address the systematic racism that exists. I love the question. And I do deeply believe that we are a country of dreamers, that most of us deeply believe the words engraved on the Statue of Liberty. We deeply believe in this promise for justice, blind justice. Uh, we really believe that children should be able to eat and go to school safely. And we believe that folks who work every single day shouldn't have to decide whether they take an insulin shot or feed their children. 
I think collectively folks get these basic principles. But what I'm looking forward to, not just with this new administration, but with this apex that we find mm. ourselves at, this amazing sort of reflection moment, we want these things. We want these things for ourselves, but we have to get to a place where we want them for everyone. And I think that the education, there's a moment of education where in the last year we have seen millions of folks lose their jobs, millions of people not have access to the daily health care that they deserve. We've seen and witnessed the, the catastrophic reality of folks not being able to say goodbye to their loved ones. What, what this moment has done seeing the reality of, of law enforcement, putting their knees in the neck of black men on, on mm -hmm. front streets, think issues that we've known that have, have been so deep in the soil of this country since its founding. We're all, I think a nation is listening. We are understanding how government affects our lives, your very mobility, your, your ability to pay your rent or mortgage or put food in your pocket, whether it's local, politics or national politics. Folks are waiting on their screens every day to figure out how they're gonna make it to next week. This is an opportunity for women to say, if not me, then who, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't step up and make some of these decisions, I'm not waiting, I, the, the Calvary isn't coming especially in local politics, it's us. So I'm yeah. excited about that. I'm excited about women mothers, grandmothers, aunties, cause running for office. I'm excited about this, this new rush to politicize ourselves, to demand just basic dignity, um, to read the newspaper every single day and to read the words white supremacy, the acknowledgement that there has been mm -hmm. unfair and unjust treatment of people of color, of black people, of women, of people mm -hmm. with disabilities. Um, Brian Stevenson, um, says in his book to move through a bad relationship, both parties have to understand where they wronged each other. And we as a nation have to do that as well, regardless what political party you're a part of, to understand that we have let folks down and that we have a lot of work to do. It is amazing to be in that process. Even in my local elected seat, seeing the power of the decisions that I'm able to make and how they affect regular folks on a daily basis, it's what an honor. And I think electeds and folks who are running for office all over the country, they see and understand that we we have this opportunity to, to move to this next stage of the country's future. And it's exciting. We do, we do. And what you said about what you can do as an elected official, I constantly remind people there's 520,000 elected positions mm -hmm. in this country. And that's 520,000 people that make decisions for us. That's, right. that's 520,000 people who shape our lives with just the stroke of their pen. That's so right. There is so much that can be done. And I do want to end on a super positive note because I cannot have you leave without asking you, what was it like to work for then DA Kamala Harris and to see her ascend to being the first woman vice president of the United States. Yes. Well, right behind me, right behind my head is my little daughter's desk. She's nine years old. She's in fourth grade and she's doing distance learning. And Layla and I watched the inauguration and Layla cheered like we were at a football or a baseball game. Uh, and for me, it was overwhelming to know that never in her life moving forward will she not remember that moment and not understand the power that women of color hold. Um, that the just in her grandmother's lifetime, black people couldn't go in the front door of, of, of many locales in this country. In fact, 60 years ago, the young people who walked into that Woolworths to protest separate but equal. Mm -hmm. um, and just 60 years later, a black woman walks into the White House, not as a staff person, not as a guest, but as a, the second in command of the free world. My daughter, mm -hmm. I saw it through her eyes. Um, working for then DA Harris was transformative because she, like most women, 
come early and leave late. She demanded so much excellence and yet had the heart of a grandmother. She was a young elder, even at the age of 38, when I first started working for her. Um, she was wise beyond her years and brought in people um, who would have never worked for a district attorney's office, including myself. I had not finished college yet. Kamala has always been about building people up. And she understood, even as a young mother at that point for my first child, that there was space for children in her office and that our work needed to be excellent and that working for the people was the best and most amazing honor that you could have. Um, so I can't believe that we're in a space where young people all over the world can look at the White House and know that there is a woman who was raised by a single mother um, who was helping to lead us into the next phase of, of our future um, and who will begin hopefully rectifying some of the, the original sins of this country. So I'm excited and I'm so, so, so happy um, for all the organizers that have organized all over the country and local elections. Um, we're in a good space, but we can be in a better space and we're gonna have to continue to yield the power that we've organized for. Latifa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you. you for everything that you do. I'm just honored to know you and to call you an Emerge sister. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Definitely go read the Oprah Magazine article. And while you're on the internet, subscribe to our YouTube channel and all of our social media. We're at Emerge America. And you can always find us at EmergeAmerica.org. Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate Black women leaders at Emerge and across the country. Thank you. Thank you.